Hello everyone and welcome to the next orca lesson. Today we'll be learning about marine litter, one of the many dangers that whales, dolphins and other marine wildlife faces in the ocean. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. So first of all, what words come to mind when you think of whales and dolphins? Hopefully you've already learnt that whales are not only very important to our ocean ecosystem, but they are also beautiful, intelligent, acrobatic and simply amazing. But despite being beautiful and intelligent creatures, they are in danger and under threat. A threat is something that is likely to cause damage or danger. So what threats do you think whales and dolphins face in the wild? Here are a few examples of the threats that whales and dolphins face. First of all, we have bycatch, which is where wildlife gets caught in fishing nets and unable to get to the surface to breathe, they drown, or if they can't swim, they can't get oxygen through their gills to breathe, like fish and sharks. Overfishing. We take many fish out of the oceans for us to eat, but there's not enough left for the whales and dolphins as well as other marine wildlife to eat. Whaling. So some countries in the world do still hunt and kill whales to eat. For example, Iceland, Norway and Japan. And habitat loss. We destroy the homes of many whales and dolphins. For example, in the Yangtze River in China, humans have built on the riverbed and riversides. There's a huge amount of shipping noise and there is so much fishing that there are not enough fish for the Yangtze River dolphin to eat. And the Yangtze River dolphin became extinct in 2007. Do any of you know what extinct means? Extinct means that there's none of that animal living on the planet. And the moment of extinction is the death of the last individual of that species. Unfortunately, whales and dolphins do get hit by ships as well, just as animals crossing the road get hit by cars, for example foxes, badgers and deer. Large whales, for example the fin whale, also get hit by big ships, causing injury and death. And dolphins can also be hit by smaller ships and propellers from jet skis, for example. But one of the biggest threats is marine litter, which we will be talking about today. But first of all, we need to understand what marine litter is. So marine litter is any man-made object lost, discarded, disposed of or abandoned that enters the sea. It may enter the sea from a ship or from the land when washed out to sea via rivers, streams and drains. Humans dump more than 10 million tonnes of rubbish each year into the world's oceans. So 10 million tonnes is the same weight as 21 Titanic ships or 50,000 blue whales. Can you think of something that's really, really heavy? Research how much it weighs and then work out how much 10 million tonnes worth would be. Marine litter is entirely due to human activity and therefore it is down to us to stop it. But where does marine litter actually come from? Do you think it comes from the land or the sea? Pause this video and have a think. Where does the litter in the sea actually come from? Can you think of five places on land where litter comes from? And can you think of five places at sea where litter comes from? Many people think that marine litter comes only from the sea, but the shocking fact is that most of the litter that ends up in the sea is actually from the land. 80% of marine litter comes from land sources. And here are some examples. So balloon releases. 70% of our world is sea, so it's likely that balloons released into the air end up in the sea rather than landing on land. Landfills. A lot of landfills are located on riverbanks or near the sea. 
when there's a high tide, high winds or flooding, all of this rubbish gets washed or blown into the sea or blown into a river. Overflowing rubbish bins and dropping litter. After a sunny day on the beach or park, I'm sure this is quite a familiar sight. But again, when the wind blows or the rain starts, this rubbish easily ends up in the sea. Cigarette butts often end up in drains, which also flow into the sea. Cigarettes are also full of very harmful chemicals, which end up in the sea and can harm our wildlife. Also, all of the plastic that gets flushed down the toilet, for example, cotton buds and face wipes, end up in the sea because they do not get filtered out in our sewage system. So as you can see, there's a huge amount of different sources of marine litter from the land. And we've briefly touched on this, but just to expand on this point a little bit more, how does it actually end up in the sea? Well, when the wind blows or if there's a storm, the wind will blow all the rubbish into streams or rivers and they end up in the sea. And when it rains, every single teeny tiny bit of plastic gets washed from our streets and playgrounds into drains, streams and rivers as well. And they also end up in the sea. But you might be wondering where in the world does most of the marine litter come from? Well, 2% of the world's marine litter is from the UK, Europe and the United States of America. Even though this sounds like a small amount, it's still very significant. So it's important that wherever you live in the world, you can try to make a difference. And that difference will help reduce the amount of plastic entering our oceans. 82% of the world's marine litter comes from Asia and countries around this region. And 16% comes from the rest of the world. So plastic and other items generally enter the marine environment as a result of irresponsible behaviour or a lack of appropriate infrastructure for responsible waste disposal. So for example, many of these countries in Asia, they don't have proper recycling facilities or rubbish waste like we do here in the UK. These people rely on dump sites, which are often located near oceans or waterways. So you can understand why so much plastic from these countries enters our ocean. In the UK, for example, the litter that escapes into the natural environment is typically either due to lack of infrastructure in certain parts of the country or careless disposal. For example, there might not be enough bins available for people to use on the go and bins are often full to the brim after a busy day on the beach or at the park and the bins might not be emptied frequently enough. Many people also don't realise that rubbish sat on top of or beside an overflowing bin can easily be blown into the surrounding environment, into streams and rivers and eventually ending up in the ocean. But wherever we live in the world, it's really important to understand that due to ocean currents, if you drop a piece of litter and it ends up in the sea, it can end up anywhere in the world. It doesn't just stay in one place. It travels throughout the oceans in the ocean currents. Marine litter washes up on even the most remote, uninhabited islands. And then 20% of marine litter comes from the sea. For example, people throwing rubbish into the sea from ships or fishermen losing their nets overboard. All of these things listed here are the top nine items found on beaches in the UK. Can you put them in order of one to nine, with one being the item that is most found on beaches and nine being one of the items that are less often found on beaches out of this list? So we have items here such as crisp packets and sweet wrappers, cotton buds, cutlery and straws, wet wipes, fishing lines and nets, glass, cigarettes, caps and lids and plastic pieces as well. So have a go and see if you can put these in order of which items were most often found on UK beaches. So in first place we have plastic pieces. In second place is packets, so crisp packets, sweet wrappers. Glass is in third place. Cigarettes are in fourth place. 
in fifth place are caps and lids. Wet wipes are in sixth place. Seventh place is cotton buds. Eighth place is fishing nets and lines. And cutlery and straws are number nine. So all of these items here are really often found on UK beaches. And this data here comes from the Marine Conservation Society on beach cleans in 2017. So what do most of these items have in common? Well, they are made of plastic. Plastic is a man-made material that's made out of a combination of different chemicals. Plastic is not a natural material. So plastic never goes away. It stays in our environment forever. It might break down into smaller and smaller pieces, but it never disappears. So it is very harmful to our environment and the animals that live on our planet. If we just briefly think about the difference between a natural material, for example, an apple core, that will break down over time back into the soil but plastic is not a natural material, so the same thing doesn't happen to it. And it's not just large pieces of plastic either. Plastic can also be categorised in the ocean as a microplastic. And these are tiny, tiny bits of plastic that are below five millimetres in size. And you can have primary microplastics, which are plastic items less than five millimetres in size, before they enter the marine environment. For example, fibres off our clothes that are made out of plastic, or perhaps even tiny bits of paint that have chipped off ships or buildings entering the sea. Or they could be secondary, so they're made up of broken down larger pieces of plastic, and they might be broken down by the sun, wind action and wave action, for example. So that's just an introduction to marine litter. So to recap, we know that marine litter is any man-made object lost, discarded, disposed of or abandoned that enters the sea. And we know that marine litter is a threat to whales and dolphins, as well as a huge amount of other marine wildlife. Most marine litter actually comes from the land, with only 20% of marine litter actually starting at sea. The most harmful marine litter is made of plastic and we know that plastic is a man-made material that it never goes away, it stays in our environment forever. In the next lesson we will learn about how marine litter harms marine wildlife. Thank you so much for listening to this first lesson about marine litter. If you want to learn more about orca please do visit our website www.orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you.